Welcome to Chapter 8 Recitation. Uh, this chapter is about writing electro configurations. We'll recognize ISO electronic species. We'll understand quantum numbers. We'll write orbital diagrams. Those include the electrons. Uh, we'll talk about some group properties and ionization energy trends. The problems you need to submit for recitation for Chapter 8 will be problems 8-1, 8-3, 8-4, 8-5, 8-6, 8-7, 8-8, 8-9, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95, 8-96, 8-97, 8-98, 8-99, 8-10, 8-11, 8-12, 8-13, 8-14, 8-15, 8-16, 8-17, 8-18, 8-19, 8-20, 8-21, 8-22, 8-23, 8-24, 8-25, 8-26, 8-27, 8-28, 8-29, 8-30, 8-31, 8-32, 8-33, 8-34, 8-35, 8-36, 8-37, 8-38, 8-39, 8-40, 8-41, 8-42, 8-43, 8-44, 8-45, 8-46, 8-47, 8-48, 8-49, 8-50, 8-51, 8-52, 8-53, 8-54, 8-55, 8-56, 8-57, 8-58, 8-59, 8-60, 8-61, 8-62, 8-63, 8-64, 8-65, 8-66, 8-67, 8-68, 8-69, 8-70, 8-71, 8-72, 8-73, 8-74, 8-75, 8-76, 8-77, 8-78, 8-79, 8-80, 8-81, 8-82, 8-83, 8-84, 8-85, 8-86, 8-87, 8-88, 8-89, 8-90, 8-91, 8-92, 8-93, 8-94, 8-95,
and you can build up. So what we'll do is oxygen is over here and we will build up from this being a 1s and you can put two electrons in that orbit. So you can only put two electrons in the orbit. So we go, that's basically hydrogen and then helium on the periodic table. And then we go to the second row and this is your S block. So we have two electrons there and that is your lithium and your beryllium. And then we come over here and we're still in row number two and this is a 2p. Now how many p orbitals are there? Well the m sub l, the angular momentum, tells you that there's three. So there's a negative one, zero, or positive one. I always think of this as px, py, and pz. It's the orientation. And each one of these p orbitals are kind of like a dumbbell shape. They have a certain shape, the p shape. And they each hold two electrons. So you can get two, four, six and those correspond to the six columns here, the six groups. So if we go all the way to oxygen, we see the oxygen is in that fourth P block. So that would be four because this can take up to six electrons. So we basically have boron, carbon, nitrogen, and then oxygen. And that is the electron configuration for the ground state of oxygen. But this problem is asking for O2+. Plus. Now, if you remember from the previous chapters, that means that if it's 2 positive, that means your proton count never changes, right? Because if you change your proton count, you change the actual element. So it has 8 protons. and But you can change your electron count. And in this case, it has 2 more positives. So this has 6 electrons. So you're going to take the electrons away. And you're going to take two of them away. And you take them from the highest energy levels. So you're going to take it from the 2p. So your ground state electron configuration for O2 minus would be 1s2, 2s2, and then 2p2. The other thing that might help you is um, to look at your energy. Um, the building up, there is a chart, the ordering, it's figure 8.5 and it's on page 341 and it shows you the different energy, the 1s, 2, 2s, 2, and then the p, and that it would be an orbital diagram when you fill in the electrons as such and you do them with opposite spins and you fill up the degenerate levels first. Okay, which neutral atom is isoelectric with O2 plus? Well you can look at your periodic table, which is what they want, and then you go back two spaces. So uh, if you went if you take one electron away on your periodic table and you go back one space, you're at nitrogen. You go back one more space and it's carbon. So what neutral atom would be isoelectronic would be carbon. And so if you actually wrote out the carbon's electron configuration state, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And that's what it means when it's isoelectronic. The actual electron configuration is the same. The next problem is 8-2. So 8-2 gives a full electron configuration for sulfur. Electron configuration, once again, that's what we did on the previous. Like I said, follow example 8.4 on page 346 through 348. And um, the first row, so 1s2, that takes you to hydrogen and helium. Then 2s2 on the periodic table, that's your second row, the two, lithium and beryllium. And then you got 2p6, that takes you to boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. 
And then we're going to the third row to get to sulfur. 3S2, that takes you to sodium and magnesium. And then we're going to go to 3P and we go 4. So 3P4. And that's in your P block. So that would be the ground st uh, electron configuration. Now, uh, the shorthand way to do it would be to go to your first noble gas uh, before the third row. And if you look at that, that's neon. So you could write neon in brackets there. And then you start out with the third row, 3S2, 3P4. But it asks for full electron configuration. So if it asks for full, it wants this whole thing. This is problem 8-3. Eight dash three. Give the chemical symbol for the element with the falling ground state electron configuration. Okay, well, this is kind of just working backwards. I just look at my periodic table and I find neon. Neon's at the end of the second row. Now you remember that all your elements, whether they're um, in the first or second. Uh, groups or in the 7a or 8a they want to get to that noble gas configuration they want to get to that octet that full shell that's the driving force here so just thought I'd throw that out there okay so you find neon and then you go to the third row and you see 3s2 takes you to sodium and magnesium and then 3p so we're in the 3p block and you go 3 because of the 3 here so aluminum sulfur phosphorus so your answer is phosphorus okay p the answer should be p because it wants chemical symbol write the quantum numbers N and L and select possible values for M sub L. Okay, so let's talk about this for a minute. Um, your N will be your row and it's your energy levels. So in here for 3 is your 3 and then here 3P3 would be 3 for your N level. L, L is um, your shape. Okay, so this is your shape. And you can have the S shape, or you can have like your P blocks. Your S shapes are your, um, you can hold two electrons in that orbit, which in your S shape, your alkali and alkaline earth metals. And then you have your P on the X axis, P on the Y, and P on the Z axis. And there's three of them. And they can each hold two electrons in each one of these. That's why there's six. Makes up your P block. And so your L number is associated with this. And if it is L equals zero, it's going to be the S shape. If it's L equals one, that's your P shape. L equals two is going to be your D shape. And that's kind of your transition metals where your valence electrons. They have some funky shapes. You don't have to look at those. I, I think of them as donuts because they have kind of like a little donut. So anyway, here you have your L values, which is your shapes. And if it's an S, it's going to be zero. You have to memorize that. If it's P, it's going to be one. And that's your L value. And then the M sub L is your orientation. And because the S is a sphere, it has no orientation. It can't be X, Y, or Z. So it's a zero. And your N sub L uh, for P can be either X, Y, or Z. And we give these numbers because these are quantum mechanical. Oh my gosh, these are like calculus pages that take like three or four pages to solve if you go on into quantum mechanics and just to come up with these four numbers and then what the chemists have done is they've taken these numbers out of these big mathematical equations and they've signed um, shapes to them 
and that's why you have to have L equals 0 or 1 and for the chemist that means that's an S shape for 0 and a P shape is the dumbbar dumbbell and this is a probability of where you're going to find your electron so um, it's not just the X Y and Z orientation for n sub L they do is negative 1 0 and positive 1 but there are three values because there's three different orientations and that's m sub L problem 8-4 sort these species into isoelectronic groups okay well let's do shorthand for these and the first one is neon. So neon would be neon. If you wanted to do longhand, it would be 1s2, uh, 2s2, 2p6. But we'll just go neon. Okay, there's neon. Uh, magnesium, I like to go to magnesium first, and then I go from the neutral. So we go neon for magnesium, and then 3s2 gets us to magnesium. But if we want Mg2+, we've got to take away two electrons and we take them away from the higher energy, which is N equals 3. And so this would be neon, because this would go away. And you see how that is the same as neon. So neon and magnesium 2+, the cation, both are isoelectronic with neon. Okay, so let's go to phosphorus. So this is the anion, 3 minus, but we're going to go and make phosphorus first. So I'm going to just go neon, and then it's, I go to neon on the periodic table, and then I go to the third row, and I go 3s2, 3p3. And that's for phosphorus. But it's a 3 minus, p3 minus. So we've got to add 3 electrons. So if you add three electrons, you would add them to this valence electron, 3p6, and that's as much as it can hold. And if you look at the periodic table, this is also shorthand way of just saying argon in brackets. So let's do SC3+. SC3 plus is, let's see if we can find a proton count here. Um, um, it's number 21. Okay, so it's got 21 protons. And so let's go to the noble gas right before it, which would be argon. And then we go to the fourth row, so we go 4s2, and then that's a 3d1. Okay, so if you review your rules, you'll see that that first transition metal um, is in the 3 energy. Now we're going to 3 plus. What are we going to do? We're going to add electrons or we're going to take them away? That's right. We're going to take them away. So we're going to take away that electron and those two electrons because they're in the highest energy state. When you take those away, you have argon. And so you can say that phosphorus anion 3 minus and SC3 plus are isoelectronic groups with argon. Okay, so now we're with argon. Well, we can also include argon in there, can't we? Okay, so argon's in there too. Now we're with helium. So let's just make helium helium. Okay, so lithium. When we find lithium plus, let's first do lithium, the neutral. So you go to the noble, pa noble gas right before it, which would be helium. And then you're in row 2, so 2s1. Two but we're doing a cation, plus 1. So we're going to take away that electron. So that's just going to be helium. So helium and lithium plus are isoelectronic. What about beryllium? Be2 plus. Well, just get in the habit of doing beryllium first. So that would be helium is a noble gas before beryllium. And then you're in the second row. So 2s2 
because it's a 2 plus we're going to take away the two higher energy electrons and that gives you helium as well so beryllium is also helium and then let's look at N3 minus so we're going to do nitrogen first so hopefully you got this down where you go helium and then you go after helium we're in the second row S 2s2 and then we go to the third element in the P block so it's going to be 2p3 and we're going to take away the higher energy elect oh no 3 minus what are we going to do we're going to add three electrons so we're going to rewrite this helium 2s2 2p6 well, that's a full shell what is that that is neon so we can put N3 minus into this group with neon and magnesium 2 plus so the valence electrons are the highest energy electrons they all want to get the noble gas configuration and hopefully you understand how to use your periodic table to get those this is problem 8 dash 5 um, understanding so you can read all of this principal quantum numbers angular momentum magnetic numbers spin numbers just go ahead and read that um, assuming that the poly exclusion principle remains valid and its distance universe was the maximum number of electrons that can populate a given orbital basically they're telling you I mean it's two electrons you can only put two electrons in a given orbital okay and write the electronic configuration of the element with atomic number eight in the periodic table what is that that's oxygen so basically 1s2 2s2 2p4 what is the atomic number of the second noble gas 10 so oxygen likes to get a 2 minus charge and it's going to go to the noble gas which is um, neon going on to problem 8-5 uh, oh actually 8-6 sorry about that 8-6 okay uh, you need to look at page 341 and um, where they have the boxes that contain the electrons this is an orbital diagram so when they ask for electron configuration you do what we have been doing when you see orbital diagrams then you need to um, put your electrons in now you can once again you get your periodic table and you find titanium and you see that it's um, number 22 on your periodic table so it's got 22 protons and you're going to build up from the bottom and you can look at page 341 to help you with your energy orbitals this is your least amount of energy down at the bottom this gets a higher energy at the top and so we're going to build from the bottom and these are your energy shells there are always be 2p we have degenerate these are degenerate because they're the same energy all of those and then you go up a little bit higher into the 3 and you have 3s a little bit higher than that you get 3p and there's three of those because m sub l equals three okay um, and then you have the 4s and then this is kind of tricky here you have 4p which is a little bit higher than your 3d so somewhere in between here you have and you have five of these and I'm going to rewrite this over here as well and you should visually see these energy levels hopefully you work enough problems that you get a feel for what is higher in energy than the other hmm. and then we'll, in between here we have 3d 
and then we're going to fill them in. So it's easier just to go ahead and have them constructed for us. Okay, and then we have our 4P. There's three of those, and then we have our 3D. And there's five of those. Okay, now you start from the bottom and you build up. So, and you've got to go, you see this half hook? That means one electron. You can put two electrons in each one of these orbits. Each one of these orbitals gets two electrons. So we got hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, and then you got to do Hund's rule. Hund's rule. That means we've got to fill the degenerate orbitals with the electron going the same spin, same direction first. So here we got the electron where we're at boron, carbon, nitrogen, and then we go down to oxygen, fluorine, neon. And neon's a full 2p. And then we go here to sodium, magnesium, alumina, those Hans rule here again, silica, phosphorus, and then we go to sulfur, chlorine, argon. Notice we're at the full P again, argon. And then we go to potassium, calcium, and then we aren't in the P block. Where where is SC or titanium? It's in the T block. So we're coming over here, and that's the next energy fill. And we go one, two, and we have to fill those degenerate orbitals, and they have to fill all the way across first. Okay, so that is uh, titanium. See so the titanium neutral. Now, this is with two electrons gone. Okay. So um, what's important here is that you read and you'll see that you feel, there's some rules here with transition metals, they're kind of tricky. You feel the 4S first, but when you lose electrons, you lose electrons um, from the 4S uh, before you lose from the 3D. Okay, so let's fill them up here. We have these two, and we're filling up the electrons. And then we fill these. And then here, we're going to lose these two electrons. So we'll still have these two electrons here. Okay, and then here we have titanium 4 plus, and we're going to lose not only have we already lost these electrons, we're also going to lose our 3D electrons. So basically, it's going to look like this right there. And titanium-4 is a common cation that it forms because it can get this stable um, conf electron configuration that is isoelectronic with argon. This is problem 8-7. According to Star Trek 5th Interstellar Geophysical Conference Standard, okay, they're talking about something here, uh, 140 known elements. Well, when I look at the element, the periodic table, I see up to 109 and then boxes for 114. In what group of the periodic table would you place element 117? Topoline, which is reported to have been discovered on Gan... Mead in 2021. Well, I would go to 114 on my periodic table and I would just count 15, 16, 17. So I would put this new um, element in group 7A. If the symbol is TO, predict the formula of a compound that presumably would result from the reaction between calcium. Well, where's calcium? Calcium likes to form a 2 plus cation and topoline. Well, topoline is in the 
Propylene is in your group 7A, so that's going to be a 1 minus. And just like if it was fluorine or chlorine or any other halogen, you would do this little crossover and you would see that it's calcium TO subscript 2. This is problem 8-8 -8 and ionization energy trends. And this is our last problem for this set. So let's look at this. Um, you want to look at figure 8.14, page 359. And when you look at this graph, you'll see that phosphorus is lower in ionization energy than nitrogen. And And it's because of the, how far the electrons are from the nucleus. That has um, the when the electrons are further away from the nucleus, their ionization energy is going to be less. So if you get an electron in an um, orbital energy of let's see three for phosphorus, that electron is going to be easier to take away because what's ionization? Ionization is um, the energy that it takes to, I say IE, to remove um, the outside electron. So to remove ionization energy, the first ionization energy would be the one electron in the gas state. So electrons have a negative charge and the closer they are to the nucleus, so in an electron in the first energy level is going to be very attracted to that positive nucleus. Okay, you get an electron in the second energy shell or the third energy shell, it's getting further away from the nucleus. And not only is it getting further away, it is actually shielded, the shield from all the other electrons that are in N equals 1 and N equals 2. And that is why phosphorus would have a lower ionization energy than nitrogen. Okay. So when you rank these, you'll see that antimony would be the lowest. And then, so we're going to write that as number one being the lowest. Um, AS, which is um, anstatine, would be number two. So you got antimony is number one. Um, a T. I like to put their f chemical formulas here. Um, antimony is S B, and then nitrogen is the highest, and phosphorus is the third. Um, so four being the highest energy, and so if you look at where those electrons, so when we talk about these, we're looking at the valence electrons. The valence electrons are the outermost electron. So in nitrogen, your um, outer electron is, you can look at your neon, and, oh, I'm sorry, it's not neon. It would be um, helium, and then you go 2s2, 2p3. So it's in your second shell. Okay, so far phosphorus, it's actually, um, and these are all in the same group. So this would be neon, and then it would be 2s2, um, that would be 3, 3s2, 3p3, and then AT is... Let's go to um, SB, antimony. Antimony would be krypton. And then you go to what row? 5. 5S2, 5P3. And then acetine, though, is xenon. And then it would be... Some of these are hard to predict when you get down into them. Um, 
and then of course you have to do the 5D10 and then the V6P5. And notice even though these are um, far out shells, you know, energy shells 5 and 6, they're so far out there, but why would um, antimony be lower than astatine? And that's because astatine only needs one electron to get a full shell. And they're trying to show you that that's a driving force to hold on to that electron. And this ionization energy is about the energy removing, required to remove the electron. Okay, so now we rank these according to the first ionization energy. So if we look at phosphorus, phosphorus is the highest. And then silica is number three. Aluminum is number one, meaning the lowest. And then magnesium is number two. So let's look at these and see about the trends here. And you should be looking at the graph as well. Okay, so phosphorus is the highest. Silica, aluminum, magnesium. What do these all have in common? They're in the same row. And so um, phosphorus and silica, they want to be negative 4 and negative 3 in compounds. They want to gain electrons. So they're not going to want to give up an electron. Remember, ionization energy, the ones that are going to have your lowest, lowest ionization energy are going to be your metals because metals naturally want to make cations and they want to give up their electrons because look at alkali and alkaline earth metals. If they give up one or two electrons on that outer valence shell, they can get to a noble gas configuration by just going one or two steps backwards on the periodic table. Now aluminum, this is kind of interesting because aluminum is a lower um, ionization energy than magnesium. That's because magnesium for magnesium 1+, plus, because we're just talking about losing 1, you still have um, electron configuration of neon and then 3s1. So magnesium went from a 3s2, which is a full shell, to a half full shell. Okay, So it, it's not going to be happy. It's not going to easily want to do that. But aluminum, aluminum goes from, I mean, if you look at aluminum, you got neon, and then 3s2 to 3p1. If it gives up this electron, it has a full shell, which is magnesium. So it's more readily able to do that, and that's why it's going to be lower than magnesium. It's about tr the energy payoff for getting a full shell, half-filled shell, the noble gas configuration. Okay, so the last one here, we have sulfur, chlorine, argon and sodium. Once again these are in the same row and they are all in the um, n equals 3 orbit and so sodium is the lowest. That makes sense doesn't it? Because if it gives up one electron it has the noble configuration, noble gas configuration of neon. Um, the, le the highest that's going to be kind of obvious, isn't it? Number four, argon. Argon is a complete octet. It does not want to give up an electron. It is going to fight and hold on to that electron. So its ionization energy will be high to let that go. And then you've got um, chlorine, which is number two, and sulfur, which is number three. So why the difference between these? And basically, chlorine really wants to just gain an electron. It wants to form one minus because it can get to argon. Um, sulfur, it's somewhere in between and it's just, just um, it doesn't have any preference for a gain or a loss, but sulfur does typically in compounds gain two electrons to form S2 minus. So you can think about these charges and the oxidation states that these elements typically go under and try to understand that that's nature's way of telling you what the ionization energy trends are.